It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to talk about the Book of Revelation. The Book of Revelation is by far the most complicated of all the books within the Bible. Now, almost all scholars for the New Testament take the position that the book of Revelation was written down roughly around 95 or 96 CE, give or take. Before I compare and contrast different ideas for the book of Revelation, I first want to state that I'm not necessarily a biblical scholar or an expert when it comes down to biblical texts, and so please take everything that I say in this video with a grain of salt. And also for this video, I have plenty of citations to back up my claims. So if you guys are skeptical about the claims that I have for the book of Revelation, please check out the citations for more information. That a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten storms and seven crowns on its head. Its tail swept a stir of the stars out of the sky and swung to them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so it might devour her child the moment she was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter and her child was snatched up to God to his throne. The woman fled in the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was not strong enough, and he lost her place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who led the whole world astray, he was hurled into the earth and his angel with him. So the question then becomes, when it talks about a dragon, what is it actually referring to when it talks about a dragon? Now, as far as text is concerned for the Old Testament, according to Isaiah chapter 27 verse 1, it says right here, And that day the Lord will punish with his sword, his fierce, great, and powerful sword, Leviathan, the gliving serpent, Leviathan, a clawing serpent, he may slay the monster of the sea. Now, according to Psalm 74, verses 9 to 14, it says, We are given no signs from God, no prophets or love, and none of us know how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand and your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garment and destroy them. But God is my king from long ago. He brings salvation on earth. It was you who split open the sea by your power, and you broke the heads of the monster in the waters. It was you who crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave it as food to the creature of the desert. If you go into the World History Encyclopedia, it says right here that Yom was the god of the sea and the pantheon of Canaanite Philippians, depicted consistently as tyrannical, angry, violent, and harsh, Yom was the brother of Mos, the, the god of death, and is now associated with chaos. This association is further by his identification with Losin, the Lothithion, the monster who clogged the seas, as Yem Ar, he personified the destructive aspect of both over chaos and earth. Now, the tablet has been discovered roughly around 1928, and it was actually can be dated back from 1500 BCE. Now, let's go to stories from Ancient Canaan, second edition, that was edited and translated by Mark S. Smith and Michael D. Colgan. Now, let's read a story about Baal and Leviathan, also known as Yom or C. C sent two messengers. Leave, lads, do not turn back. Now head towards the assembly in the council at the center of the mountain of night. Do not fall at El's feet. Do not prostrate yourself before the assembly of the council. 
Stand standing before you speak, repeat your message, and address the bull, my father, repeat to the assembly and council. Message or see your master, your lord, judge river, L, give up the one you are hiding, the one the masses are hiding, give up Baal and his power, the son of Dagon, I will assert his inheritance. The last left, they did not turn back, they head towards the center of the mountain of night, the assembly and council. There the gods had sat down to eat, the holy ones to a meal, Baal was standing by El. As soon as the gods saw him, saw the messenger of sea, the, message, the mention of Judge River, the gods lowered their heads to the top of their knees, and onto the princely seas, Baal rebuked them. Gods, why have you lowered your heads to the top of your knees, and onto the priestly seats? I see, gods, that you are struck in with the fear of the messenger of sea, the mission of Judge Rivers. Gods, raise your hands from the top of your knees, from your priestly seats, for I reply to the messenger of sea, the messen of Judge River, the gods raise their hands from the top of the knees, from their priestly seats. Then the messenger of sea arrive, the mention of Judge River, they did not fall at El's feet, did not procrastinate themselves before the assembly and council. Still standing, they spoke their speech, they repeated their message. They seemed like one fire or two. Their tongues were sharp swords. They addressed the bull, his father, El. Message of see your master, your lord, Judge River. El, give up the one you are hiding. But the one masses are hiding, give up on Baal and his powers, the son of Dagon. I will assert his adherences. And the bull, his father, El, replied, See, Baal is your servant. River, Baal is your servant. The son of Dagon is your prisoner. He will be brought as your tribute when the gods brought your payment. And the Holy One gives, then Baal will be gentle. The mighty will fall to the ground, the powerful into the slime. These words have just come from her mouth, this speech from her lips she has just spoken when she groaned from under Prince C's throne. And Qatar replied, Let me tell you, Prince Baal, let me repeat right on the clouds, Behold, your enemy Baal, behold, you will be killed for your enemy, behold, they will assassinate your foe, you will take your eternal kingdom, your dominion forever and ever. Kotar brought down two clubs and pronounced their names. As for you, your name is Driver. Driver C. Dre. Drive C. from the thrones, river from the seat of his dominion. Dance and Ball's hand like a vulture from his fingers. Strike Prince C. on his shoulder, judge river between the arms. The club danced in Ball's hands like a vulture from his fingers, and struck Prince C on his shoulder, Judge River between the arms. C was strong, he did not shrink, his joints did not shake, his frame did not collapse. Qatar brought down two clubs and pronounced their names. As for you, your name is Chaser. Chaser, Chase C, Chase C from the thrones, River from the sea of his dominion. Dance in Baal's hand like a vulture from his fingers, strike Prince C on the skull, judge river between the eyes, C will stumble, he will fall into the ground, and the club danced in Baal's hands like a vulture from his fingers, and struck Prince C on the skull, judge river between the eyes, C stumble, he fell to the ground, his joints shook, his frame collapsed, Baal captured and drank C, he finished off Judge River. So based upon what I analyze, it seems as though that Leviathan or Yom is directly referred to in the book of Revelation, but it seems as though that in the book of Revelation, they're trying to conflate the idea of Leviathan to Satan. Now in a previous video, I talked about how they did the exact same thing with Lucifer, because Lucifer was also an idea that came directly from Greek mythology. And so they're using other elements to combine it with Satan for that particular passage right there. Then I saw a second beast coming out the earth. It has two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound has been healed. And it has performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in the view of the people. 
Because of the science it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image and honor the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all of you refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they cannot buy or sell unless they have the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. It calls for wisdom. Let the people who have insight calculate the number of the beast, for the number of man, that number is 666. So what exactly does 666 really mean? Now, according to this article that's been done by The Guardian, it says right here, unlike what many apocalyptic Christian believes, the biblical book of Revelation is often viewed by scholars as describing the falling Roman Empire, not the final days of earth. Thus, Revelation 666 is likely used to refer to the Emperor Nero, who is not particularly fond of Christian. To, to avoid persecution, the book of Revelation created a riddle to refer to Nero using numeral equivocations for each letter of his name, which is how both ancient Greek and Hebrew denoted numbers anyway. Greek and Hebrew are the main languages of the Bible. Using this system, the numeral equivocation for Nero's name is either 616 or more famously 666, so it's safe now to state that the Emperor Nero was likely the beast referred to in Revelation. Nero was a Roman emperor from 54 to 68 CE. His lavish parties combined with the burning of Rome continued the economic chaos that had plagued the Roman civilization since the day of Tiberius. Although he had good advisors, the emperor would continue to see one catastrophe after the other. First, there was a peaceful conspiracy, and a successful plot to cure Nero, evoking at least 19 senators, as well as other leading citizens. His failure brought about the execution of 41 individuals. Although it failed, it led to Nero being forever paranoid and utter trusting. The greatest threat to Nero's regime, however, was the Great Fire, which began on July 19, 64 CE and lasted for six days. Ten of the 14 districts of the city were destroyed, hundreds died, thousands were left homeless, and looters were in the cities. Since the fires, many questions have been raised. How did it start? Historians differ in response to the question, was he even in the city, or did he watch it burn? The blame fell, however, upon the heads of the persecuted Christians who always view Nero as the Antichrist. One final example comes directly from Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll, for writing on both sides, and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming a loud voice, who was worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth can open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and weeped because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. And then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Zuda, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scrolls and his seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, and circled by the four living creatures and the elders. The Lamb has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat at the throne. And when he taken it, the four living creatures and twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. This seems to be a direct reference to Daniel chapter 7 verse 4 to 6 where it says, The first was like a lion, and it had the wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off, and it was lifted from the ground, so it stood on two feet like a human being, and the mind of a human who was given to it. And then, then before me a second beast, which looked like a bear, it rises up in one of its sides, and it has three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, 
it was told, Get up and eat your full of flesh. After I looked, and there was before me another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and it had it back on four wings like that of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. If you put this verse into context, what you'll find is this particular image right here. And the text on the bottom says that this wall reflects a depiction of a typical Assyrian lion hunting scene that King Asasipal II stand in his royal chariot and shoot at the leaping wooden lion. The two royal attendants behind the wooden lion, holding their shields and their daggers, are ready to interfere at any moment. A dying or dead lion appears beneath the chariot's horses. Another example of this comes directly from the ball cycle. It says right here, Then she raised her eyes and looked. I sure saw a ball coming, the virgin on neck coming, the mistress of the people approaching. Her feet shook, her back was as though scattered, her face broke out in sweat, her joints trembled, her vertebrae became weak. She raised her voice and shouted, Why has Baal the Conqueror arrived? Why has the Virgin Annette arrived? Has my enemy killed my sons? Have they finished off my pride of lions? The gods left. They do not turn back. They head towards Baal on the heights of Zephon. Then Urgur spoke, Messenger of El's son Death, the word of El's darling, the hero, My appetite is like of a lioness, or the desire of a dolphin to see. My pull sees the wild oxen, my well grabs the deer. When I have the appetite for an ass, then I will eat with both my hands. In other words, lions are basically symbolic for shrimp. Now when it comes down to sheep, Anki is actually symbolized by sheep according to ancient records that we do have. And Anki was known as the Sumerian god of wisdom, fresh water, intelligence, trickery, mischiefs, craft, magic, exorcism, healing, creation, fertility, fertility, and art. And in terms of imagery, it depicts him as a bearded man wearing a hornet cap and long robes as he ascends the mountain of the sunrise. Getting back to the ball cycle, it says right here, she slaughters 70 wild oxen as a oblation for Baal the Conqueror. She slaughters 70 pal oxen as a oblation for Baal the Conqueror. She slaughters 70 sheep as a oblation for Baal the Conqueror. In other words, it seems as though that sheep were basically used as a source of wool and for sacrifices, but also was used as gifts towards somebody else. So those are my personal connections for the Book of Revelations. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend, because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.